This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. When life gets hard, talking to someone can help, whether it's venting, processing, or getting tools to deal with stress. Visit betterhelp.com slash super and lighten the load. Hey, brother! You guys remember Riley from Inside Out, right? Like, full of joy, wearing all of her emotions on her sleeve, transplant from Minnesota to San Francisco, great at hockey, and totally soulless. Seriously, it never ceases to amaze me how, like, you watch one Pixar movie and then it goes on to, like, recontextualize, like, so many of the other ones. Like, did Woody get a soul? Does Mei Lin have two? Did somebody else cause the count to be off? Did Riley lose her soul? See our published works and the rest of this video. Anyway, recently I was driving back from vacation and I had all three kiddos in the back seat and we played the movie Inside Out for them, which by the way, once you have kids, that movie hits like, way harder. But I was getting to that part of the end of the movie where the console starts to gray out and her emotions lose the ability to affect her state of mind or control her mood at all. Because he's working, what? what? He's in working. And while thankfully joy and sadness arrive moments later at HQ to save the day, Spoilers. I realized we never got much of an explanation for why the console starts to gray out in the first place. Well, I mean, she did lose all of her core memories and her final island of personality starts to crumble, so there is that. But why does that mean her emotions can't function? Well, I think it's because what we're seeing in Inside Out is an up-close look at someone going through the process of becoming a lost soul. Guys, before we dive on into today's video, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Burnout is not just a buzzword, guys. It's a real experience that many of us go through whenever we work too much and don't prioritize our own mental health. And it can creep up and start affecting you in ways before you even realize it, like insomnia or fatigue or lack of motivation. Life can just be overwhelming, no matter who you are. It's just part of being human. That's why BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to help to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with a fellow human can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. For me, therapy has had a really profound impact on my life. It has helped me cope with and deal with burnout on different occasions, and most importantly, allowed me to feel my emotions. And BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, audio, and even live chat sessions, so you don't have to be on camera with your therapist if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a the therapist in under 48 hours. Plus, our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com super. One more time, that's betterhelp.com super. Link is in the description down below. Okay, so did Riley lose her soul in Inside Out? Well, first let's revisit what we know about becoming a lost soul in the first place from the movie Soul. We are first introduced to the concept of a lost soul when Joe is mentoring 22 and they bring him to the astral plane where you can witness people who are in the zone. The zone, of course, being that feeling you get when you're really in the groove of whatever you're great at doing or passionate about. Like, for Joe, this is playing the piano. But Joe and 22 quickly encounter a lost soul who promptly attacks them before being stopped by Moonwind, who gives a brief explanation as to what lost souls are. Some people just can't let go of their own anxieties and obsessions, leaving them lost and disconnected from life. And then the example we get in the movie is of a hedge fund manager who works on Wall Street, who's become so obsessed and lost in his job and the need to make a trade that he has become a lost soul. However, as soon as Moonwind steps in and the hedge fund manager is able to re-enter his body, he immediately wakes up and is able to feel all of his emotions again. What am I doing with my life? I'm alive! I think it's also worth noting here that being a lost soul doesn't mean that your body back on Earth dies. It's not that the hedge fund manager isn't able to function back on Earth, it's that he has no passion or feelings about anything. We should also point out that not all lost souls become lost souls by being miserable. The director of Soul, Pete Doctor, says, Some people get caught up in something that isn't necessarily bad. Cooking, video games, art. But if you do it to the exclusion of everything else in life, you might become a lost soul. So with all that in mind, I think this is absolutely the state we find Riley in at the end of Inside Out. She has left home, she's wearing all black to represent her disconnectedness from all of her emotions, and said emotions have lost the ability to make her feel anything at all. Plus, I think it's safe to say that not only is she suffering some severe anxiety in this moment, but she has also become obsessed with the idealized memories of her past life in Minnesota. In fact, we get a literal physical representation of that obsession right here. Without joy or a sadness present, anger, fear, and disgust decide that the only way to get more core memories is to go back to the place where all the original core memories were formed, 
in Minnesota. And with what has to be said, very little consideration, they go ahead and light this idea in her head, which sets her in motion. She skips school, packs her things, leaves home, buys a bus ticket, even gets on the bus and is ready to voyage away from San Francisco. But as she's on her way to the bus, we do see that her mom keeps trying to call her and that she keeps declining the call, which is causing her final island of personality, Family Island, to crumble. And upon seeing this, her remaining emotions do everything they can to take the idea out of her head, but they can't. Why? Because it has become an obsession. And this is when the console begins turning gray and Riley truly becomes a lost soul. But of course, and thankfully, we all know that this only lasts for about a minute before joy and sadness re-arrive in HQ and save the day. Spoilers. But what's really interesting here is how Riley escapes this situation, because I don't think it's like the hedge fund manager. Like, I don't think Moonwind rolled up on her immediately lost soul and just put her back in her body. In fact, I'm positive that's not what happens because we get to see exactly how she overcomes this. It's joint sadness. When they get back, they finally allow Riley to feel sad about her move instead of trying to force her to feel happy all the time. And this really lines up with what Moonwind tells us about how people become lost souls and their tenuous relationship with the zone. The zone is enjoyable, but when that joy becomes an obsession, one becomes gotta disconnected find, from find, life. I mean, is that one sentence not the entire theme of Inside Out? Joy is the literal embodiment of that emotion that is obsessed with Riley only feeling that way all the time. And her inability to let Riley feel sad even for one moment is basically what sets in motion the plot of the entire movie. Which goodness, can we just take a moment and pause and remind everyone that it's okay to feel sadness. Oh, remember the funny movie where the dog dies? But seriously, look at Riley's memories on the day they move. Like, for sure, Riley's having a bad day, but Joy is still doing everything she can to make Riley feel happy. But that's not all she's doing. In fact, I dare say even more than trying to make her feel happy, she's trying to prevent her from feeling sad. Dad just left us. Oh, he doesn't love us anymore. That's sad. Delicious. Pizza? Pizza. Yes, pizza. <laughs> like seriously, just look at the memory bank. There's plenty of fear, anger, and disgust mixed in with the joy, but joy has halted any sadness from getting through. And that really is sad because just one single sad memory could have signaled mom and dad that Riley needed help, but Joy just cannot comprehend this. And you've met Sadness. She, well, she... <laughs> I'm not actually sure what she does. Instead, she just does everything she can to banish Sadness from Riley's mind. I mean, seriously, let's go back to Seoul and look at how you reaccess your body from the astral plane. It's by drawing a circle in the sand. Joy does the same thing to Sadness, but she draws a circle around her with chalk. But she's doing it from this side of things, which means she's like metaphorically sending Sadness to a literal different plane of existence. And honestly, I don't think that's far off from the metaphor they're going for here because these two movies, Inside Out and Soul, were both directed by the same guy. Pete Doctor. Like, in his mind, this is how he visualizes these things and how he has now represented it in two movies. That, or I guess maybe he just really likes circles, which is fine too, you know, I mean, it's a great shape. I mean, it's a rhombus, but <laughs> what is? Honestly, while we're here, rhombus, probably a top 10 word as well. Like, I mean, this, this video is full of good words. But here's the thing. I don't want to throw too much shade at Joy because I really don't think it's her fault that any of this happens. And honestly, I struggle to say it's really anyone's fault, if you will. It's just a tough situation the family is going through. Like, have you ever moved across the country? It's not easy. Here's what I mean though, and I'll admit this can be hard to kind of conceptualize because whilst joy, sadness, fear, disgust, and anger kind of feel like their own characters with their own brains and motivations and stuff, they're not. At the end of the day, they are all still just Riley, which once you grasp makes certain moments like really cool and you sort of get to see Riley's instincts at play. Like specifically right here when she's going to bed on the first night. Riley has done her best all day to put a bright face on, but reality is setting in and well, I'll just let them tell you. We could be lying on the dirty floor in a bag 
There's absolutely no reason for Riley to be happy right now. Anger is right. Riley is right. Her instincts are spot on in this moment. She is trying to let her other emotions just take over and handle the situations. And honestly, this could have been the end of the movie, except... Well, you've stayed our happy girl. If you and I can keep smiling, it would be a big help. This little nudge from mom forces Riley to reconsider and try and remain happy. Happy yeah, it is. Team happy. Sounds great. Totally behind you, Joy. It's this external pressure that is forcing her to push sadness down and never let it through. And the thing is, it's not like mom is the bad guy here either. She's just trying to help out dad. And from everything Riley has shown her so far, Riley has remained positive, which I think is why she's so proud of Riley in the moment. She's expressing gratitude. I think she expected her to have a really hard time with the move, but so far she's just been really happy. Ironically though, this signals Riley to continue pushing sadness down to the point where she even has a sad core memory and she tries to suppress even that, which as we all know, causes the loss of all of her core memories, the very basis for her entire personality. You can also see that the more she pushes sadness down, the stronger the urge to become sad becomes. Like literally everything sadness touches starts turning blue. Like when sadness is in long-term memory, she's just touching everything. Random memories all over the place in Riley's mind are just becoming sad. And yet, she resists. Interestingly though, even after the core memories are gone, she mostly remains herself until she tries to access any given aspect of her personality, which over and over causes the destruction of another island until the last one finally falls and her soul is lost. And I think what Pete Doctor is really trying to say here is that the pursuit of nothing but joy or purpose, I guess, if you will, in the case of soul is, fruitless. We don't assign purposes. Where did you get that idea? You have to let yourself experience your feelings as you feel them. You have to find a way to be present because if you don't, you'll get lost. And I just personally like to say that I know that's really hard. Like it is easy for me to sit here and say that, but we all experience all sorts of external pressures every single day from all sorts of angles telling you how to feel and how not to feel. But in the end, you just gotta let it out. You gotta find a way to celebrate yourself. Guys, speaking of celebrating, later this month, Super Carlin Brothers is going to be celebrating its 10 year anniversary on YouTube. And part of that celebration is going to be the hosting of another Spirit Week. Starting the week of June 20th, each day will have a themed day. We have Mickey Monday, Pikachu Day, Lightsabers vs. Wands Day, Thor's Day, Formal Friday, and SCB Saturday. All you have to do each day is find a fun way to dress up and celebrate that fandom and post and share those photos on Instagram. Make sure you tag each post with the hashtag SCB Spirit Week so we can find and share all of them from me and Ben's personal Instagram accounts. And by posting any picture at all, you'll be entering to win any of our daily contests. So go ahead and mark your calendars for Spirit Week. And that Friday, June 24th, we're going to be hosting a trivia live stream right here on the main channel. Hope you'll join us for that as well. But guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you want to see some more soul theories, like how Mei Lin might have two souls, you can check out this video right here. But otherwise, until next time, Ben, I will see you in another Life Brother.